In this video, we're taking a look at sex-linked or X-linked traits and using pedigrees to trace the genotypes of the. In sex-linked traits, it's all about the sex chromosomes. So on all of these individuals, we're going to be writing the chromosomes XY for males and XX for females. And then we're going to use a superscript to indicate the gene that's on those chromosomes. A couple of reminders about this is that when you start these, if you did the notes, you're going to take a look at the males first because males always have an X, Y uh, arrangement of chromosomes and usually the trait is on the X chromosome and so since males only get one X chromosome which has to come from the mother because the father has to donate the Y chromosome it's easy to figure out the males first and then the third thing you figure out are females that have the trait so females that have the trait are going to have two X chromosomes and if it's a recessive trait they're going to be both lowercase letters for that trait so in our first example here which we'll do this together hemophilia is a recessive sex link disorder located on the X chromosome and causes the inability for a person's blood to clot or coagulate right in the genotypes of each individual on the line near them and they've given us a couple of these to start with so males are the squares females are the circles and so what you're gonna do first is you're gonna go through and look at all of the males and figure out what their genotypes are so the first male that I notice here is male number four and so we know that males have an X Y arrangement and now give yourself some space to write in the genes on those so the gene isn't on the Y chromosome so the gene has to be on the X chromosome since the male has hemophilia is indicated by the fact that he is shaded in there must be a lowercase letter H on his X chromosome so this male is X lowercase h y number five is also going to be x lowercase h y because males are x y and in order to have the trait you have to have that lowercase x now nowhere else on here are there any indicated males that are shaded in so let's look at the males that aren't shaded in so the first male that i see that's not shaded in is male number seven here so male number seven does not have hemophilia so this must be x capital h y because again, the trait's not on the Y chromosome, it's only on the X, and males only inherit one X chromosome, so that's why males generally tend to have these recessive diseases in sex-linked traits more often than females. Our next male is number 10, so this male does not have hemophilia, so this is X capital H Y, and that takes care of all of the males. So now we're going to back up and we're going to see if we can figure out any of the females. None of the females on here possess hemophilia because there's none shaded in. Let's figure out now um, uh, children are all, are all shaded in for the second generation. So let's see if we can figure out number two. Female number two we know is XX for the chromosome. Female number two has a child number five with hemophilia. Well, the Y chromosome has to come from dad. So the dad gives the Y chromosome. That means female number two has to have a lowercase h on one of her X chromosomes. Since she does not have hemophilia, female number two has to be capital X, big H, capital X, little h. Because she doesn't have hemophilia, so she has to have the dominant trait. So person number two is filled in. Let's see if we can figure out numbers nine and 11 and 12 now. Number nine is a female, so we know that they have X, X chromosomes, because all females have XX. She does not have hemophilia, so that means one of her genes has to be a capital H. She has to get the capital H from dad, because I'm sorry, from the mother, number three. So the capital H has to come from them. The other X chromosome has to come from dad. So the only X chromosome that dad has, number four, is this X little h. So she has to get the X little h from dad. Number 11 is female. So we know that 11 has XX sex chromosomes. The dad can only give an X little h and you always write the little h second because little h has always come second. You always write them capital lowercase. And the mother could give a big h or a little h. 
Well, since number 11 is not a hemophiliac, it can't be the little h because that would give them little h, little h be hemophiliac. So number 11 had to inherit the dominant trait, the x big h. So x big h is number 11. We're gonna use the same reasoning on number 12. Number 12, the dad had to give the x little h, and since the number 12 is not a hemophiliac, then she had to inherit the big H from mother. So she gets x big H, x little h. And so we filled in everybody. So it's a matter of just kind of reasoning out which ones they have. Remember, the dads can only give y chromosomes to males. They have to give their x chromosomes to females. It's dads that are determinant of what sex the offspring is in. And again, we were able to figure out everybody on here. So let's take a look at the bottom here. And it says, for all phenotype questions below, on the first line, write male or female. And on the second line, write normal carrier or hemophilia. Question A, what is the phenotype of individual number two? So number two is a carrier of hemophilia because she has the little h gene. Uh, this one didn't ask us to shade them in, so we're not shading these in like we did the last one. Number A is a female and she is a carrier. Question B, what is the phenotype of individual four? Individual four is a male hemophiliac. And then I will let you finish questions C through H. Then you will be in charge of the second page of this document. So number two is about fragile X syndrome. I don't know what fragile X syndrome does. You can look that up if you're interested to see what the disease is. Uh, they've given you this female over here, which is homozygous dominant. Remember, the first thing you do is you go through here and identify all the males. So the males are easy because they're going to either be X big HY or X little HY, and you can determine them by how they're shaded in. And then you go back and look for any females that are showing forms of disease. So remember, all the females, females with the trait have to be XX, but they're going to have both recessive alleles on there. You got a couple of questions to ask about that pedigree. And then on number three, uh, you're just going to fill in the chart here. This is about color blindness. Fill in your males first, because sex link traits, males are easiest to do. Then fill out your females with the carrier, so or with the trait, number three right here. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.